So welcome back to another episode, and today's episode is on collecting for the Nintendo Switch for the last five years. Yes, you heard it right, five years has flown by. Next month is the fifth anniversary of the Nintendo Switch launch. Like so many of you out there, I was looking forward to this machine, this at the time unknown machine. We had no idea if it was gonna be a success or a failure. We just knew that we wanted to try it, try it the screen, try the dog, play on the TV, take it on the bus, take it to a forest, anywhere you could take it, right? That was fascinating. And who knew that I'd be here five years later with my own Nintendo Switch collection. So today I'm gonna to look at my Switch games and the special editions and kind of look at them all and talk about it. How has it been collecting for this machine? Has it been fun? Are some games getting expensive in time? What is it looking like? And I'm gonna ask you guys down below, let me know what has the Nintendo Switch meant to you? Has it just been a fun machine to play on? Has it been a machine that you just want to collect for? Let me know down below what you guys think. Now, we've got to go back five years ago, and at that time, I only had one Nintendo Switch game, and that was The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild right here. And the thing that's been fascinating, because you see in so many videos now, people have piles of red games behind them, right? And that was kind of a new thing, was the casing on the Nintendo Switch. Very rectangle, very small, because Nintendo went back to cartridges. And I gotta admit something, I loved it. It was kind of a, a return to the old Nintendo days, where you just plugged in a cartridge and it worked. Don't get me started with them releasing Switch games now with where you actually have to download the game. That bugs me, but that's not what we're talking about. I liked the idea of the smallness of the cases. I like the red logo, and I like the, the red on the side. And look at this. Created for an awesome unified collection. So you can just have your wall of red right here and your white lettering. Very unusual, it really stands out when you have it up on a shelf. And I thought that was kind of fascinating stuff. And you know what's really interesting is Breath of the Wild gets released, but guess what else got released? The Master Edition. One of my favorite special editions ever. And I have not opened it because I have the game here. I finished it, loved it. But I wanted this as a collectible to sit on the shelf uh, because Breath of the Wild is my favorite game of all time. I know a lot of people were shocked about that. But it was fascinating that they came out with a Master Edition to begin with. And it was very hard to get. I remember going down to my local EB Games, GameStop for anybody in the States, and I had pre-ordered it right away on like day one. And I remember there was a huge line for the Switch that day. And I walked in, had my receipt, and they gave me that huge box, right? And everybody in the store was going, what is that? Nobody even knew what it was. I, I mean, the Switch was hyped, but at the same time, a lot of people didn't really realize that there was like a big special edition for Breath of the Wild day one, right? And so I picked that up and it's sit sitting up there. It's been sitting up there for five years. And every time I look at it, I go, oh, I really like that. I really like that. So after that, games got released and uh, it was fun to collect for it. And all of a sudden, there were so many games coming out. And this is an interesting fact, like, what do you guys think? Do you think there's too many games for the Switch? And I'm only meaning it for one reason, for collectability. Is it gonna make the machine, uh, like, stale in time? Because there's just so many games, right? That it's not really collectible that way. I'm gonna say that I beg to differ. I think this is gonna be one of the most highly collectible machines in time. And the reason why is I'm gonna say this. Nintendo. Okay, and I'm not I'm saying this from an outside point of view because I like PlayStation and I love Xbox really like them like them a lot But Nintendo consoles in general have always been the hot thing to collect for the NES the Super Nintendo N64 GameCube is hot right now Wii is hot right now and this This is lukewarm right now. What do I mean by that? Give this another 10 years and I was saying this to somebody the other day there's many kids that have grown up with this machine, like I grew up with a regular Nintendo. And in 10 years time, in 20 years time, they're gonna have some disposable income and they're gonna remember their childhoods and they're gonna say, man, I really wanna get that game from my childhood again. I remember playing that at a friend's house, like I always say, right? And they'll have the money to go and do it and they'll drive the prices up. 
right? And then we have many other things like limited run games has created a lot of things. And we're gonna get into all those uh, special editions in a little bit here. But I wanna say something else that has been very interesting to collect and I, and I don't have a lot of them, but boy, boy, I've really loved the Nintendo Switch Pro Controllers and all the different uh, versions of them and themes of them. And I don't have them all. I just got the ones that I thought personally look cool. Like the Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 2 one is just so fantastic. And Monster Hunter Rise, I'm not a huge fan of Monster Hunter, but boy, did I ever like that controller. And so I enjoyed it, you know, con collecting some of the controllers in there. And there's been some great peripherals over the years. I'm not even a fan of, huge fan of Skyward Sword, but I thought that was, this was so dope. I had to absolutely get this. Now, let's look at this aspect of things. There's been something fascinating that has happened with Nintendo this generation for the Switch. Some of their special editions are all uniformed to be the same size, right? Look at, look at this. They're all pretty much the same size. So these all go up on the shelf really, really nicely. And so it's like, oh wow. But the funny thing is only for a few of them. Not all of them are like this. Uh, a lot of them, they just release like things like Link's Awakening is like this and it has no uniform to the big box ones here. And is one game better than the other? That's for you to decide. But they've decided to do like a smaller version here. So there's not a unified uh, Nintendo Switch format for special editions. Look at the Master Edition to begin with. We never got anything like that quite again. And then you get Octopath Traveler, which is one of the most amazing special editions. And that's the thing, Nintendo for this generation really released a lot of special editions for the console. And some of them, as I say, were not the unified thing, but a lot of them are. Here's, here we go with Capcom. See, the, the sizing is about the same for a lot of these. And then we go into Ikaruga, uh, the, the NIS stuff here, with Langrisser, all about the same size. And then Limited Run joined in on basically the same size as well. So we have a lot of special editions that are unified uh, in, in this shape and size. And, and obviously we have one of my favorites here. I, I love this SNK 40th Anniversary Collection. So many games I enjoy in there. All about the same size as other special editions, all released by different companies. So there's not really a unified plan, but sometimes there is, and I think that's what's so funny. So when I go to put all this stuff on the shelves, they're kind of all over the place. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, trying to figure out what should go where and what should fit which way. And then you get Atlas throwing in a special edition like this that totally messes everything up because this is kind of the shape they usually go for for their Persona series, for the Shin Megami Tensei series in general. And it makes up for a lot of fun on the shelf collecting. Now, one thing I think we can all agree on, I think we can all agree on this, hopefully we can, is that on the Nintendo Switch, what I love about the machine the most is that we have such a great mix of games, right? So we got great first parties from Nintendo, great third party supports, and a lot of indie developers in there. And a lot of those indie developers have got games that have come out in physical form, which I really, really appreciate. And that's the one thing I wanna say is I appreciate Limited Run, Strictly Limited, and all these other companies that are giving the small time developers the uh, ability to bring out physical games. And that's, that's something we're gonna get into in a little bit here, but I think we can all agree that there's a great abundance of games for the Switch. As I say, is it too many? Is it too many games? Is it gonna glut the market? That remains to be seen. I still think it's gonna be a highly collectible machine, but I, as a fan of games, really like this machine because I get great 3D games, I get great 2D games, and I get them physically, and they don't take up that much room, as I said, so you can have piles of these games and have all this great stuff. And what I like is there's a lot of really old school games that have been brought back, a lot of remasters. Uh, they've come out on a lot of other machines as well, but on the shelf, all together, I've really enjoyed collecting for this machine more than any other machine, I can say that, because of how small and compact uh, these games are and how many more games I can get on the shelf. I think that's a big thing. So I'm really enjoying collecting for the Nintendo Switch after five years. And it's amazing how many I've ended up getting after five years. Every one of these games, I absolutely love. There's not one game on here I don't like. All the games have meant something in some regard. Now, 
now we get into like strictly limited and uh, you know limited run games. They've released some really cool special editions. Like for me, the Ninja Saviors on the Nintendo Switch. Oh, this special edition, I was like, oh my god, yes, I'm absolutely getting this. This is strictly limited. And then limited run games releasing things like Thimbleweed Park. I mean, I, I really like this game as well. So what does that do to the collecting uh, field of this market of what's going on? How is these independent guys affecting the collectability of everything? Because in a way, I've said it before, they're artificially creating limited games. Right? Are they going to be worth something in time? Are they going to be worth it as a, as, a, as a fan to get these things? It's crazy for that. That's something that will become a, a matter of time. I think if you play a game from the past and you're like, Oh my god, I love this game. I want a physical copy. The only way to get it was on a limited run one time. And they don't print them anymore. You're like, you have to go into eBay and pay the big bucks for it. That's, that's what's really... And that's already starting to happen. I mean... Great example, Shantae, the Pirate's Curse here. I think this is worth upward of three to four hundred dollars now. And this was only released a bunch of years back now. Already, we're seeing some prices go through the roof where some other things have not done that. I, as I say, I think in time, some of these prices will go up. And I'm only saying that for a lot of you out there that are interested in this. For me, I love collecting it like a game that I absolutely enjoy. Like, great, uh, Blazing Chrome, what a fantastic game this is. Or will this be ex you know, worth something in time? I couldn't tell you. It's worth something to me because I absolutely think this game is an incredible game. And usually it's all the games that I really like tend to, uh, you know, go upwards in price. Like when I got Snatcher, you know, who knew that the game would be like worth over like a thousand plus dollars now. I mean, it's just because it was a good game. So if you are trying to collect, to get some profitability with this stuff. There's no roadmap for any of this. There's no roadmap. What I suggest if you're in it for that kind of reason, buy games you enjoy. And usually those are the ones that will go upward in price if that is your thing. Uh, but to collect for this machine has been a great joy. It's been a great joy seeing some of the special editions and some of the games I really enjoy getting editions like this. I mean, there's a lot of variety with the Nintendo Switch and that's what I really like the most about it. We have just our regular editions here, then we have all these special editions and, and people always ask me all the time, is it worth collecting for the Nintendo Switch? Is it is it something that you should get into? Do you like fun games? If you like fun games, this is the machine for you. I always will say collect because you enjoy it, not because of any profitability. If it gets that way, well, hey, that's kind of cool, but don't go in it looking for that because you never know with this stuff. You never know. And I remember getting so many ga great games for the Xbox 360 and I thought, oh man, I bet some of these will be worth something in time because I love them so much. Not worth pennies now. They're not worth anything, some of those games. And so I was like wrong about that stuff. It's something you can't predict, that's for sure. But the thing that I can predict is that I've enjoyed collecting for the Nintendo Switch for the last five years. It's been so meaningful and so fun and so fulfilling looking up at my shelf of all these red cases and going, oh my god, look at this game. River City Girls, you know, uh, you know, Super Robot Wars X. I've also imported a lot of games. And that's something else I should mention briefly. There's a lot of games that are not released over here that are released in Japan only that have English. Go to Play Asia, and you can always see if it says English next to it, if it's a game that you're interested in, and a lot of them have English in there. So it's been a great system to collect for, so many great games. I mean, Grandia, I got Grandia again on this machine, which was so awesome. We got Dragon Quest XI on this machine, and you can't wrap your head around it. The Nintendo Switch has probably got a couple more good years in it, but right now, I'm absolutely fulfilled as a game lover and as a game collector. I think it's been a really fun machine. What do you guys think of the Nintendo Switch collecting for it? Let me know down below. So anyways, guys, until next time.